how exciting is this? With the 11th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the My Chicago Bears select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. Welcome back to the Irish Bears show. It is great to be back, finally getting to talk Bears. We're saying it offline. It seems like it's been a while since we did a show, and even though it was only last week. So, look, it's great to have yourself, Tony, Noel, Jeff. It's brilliant to get you on again. It seems like you're an honorary uh, Irishman at this point point in time. Another epic path as we go on. How are you doing today? I am doing great. How are you guys doing? Uh, it's always fun. In, it's always fun with Smashing. the Chicago Bears. Smash yeah. <laughs> I've yeah, had a couple I, of whiskeys, so I'm doing great, man. And I can see you're I, having a wee beat as well. I have, I have <laughs> one before we start. I have one before we start, and I have one during. And if we go over an hour, I have a third. That's yes. That's that, that is how we do it. I guess before we can see you on, Jeff, how was your Christmas? How was your New Year's? Did you drink lots and eat lots of food? Yeah. There were days of the week. Uh, it, it, was, it, uh, it was actually great. Uh, we we uh, didn't go see our family uh, for Christmas this year because everybody's got the Omicron here uh, in New York. So uh, we went to a movie and to dinner in Midtown at Lincoln Center. And we had what we call the Jewish Christmas. It was just us and the Jewish people of the Upper West Side celebrating Christmas Day together. And it was fantastic. Uh, to you have the city all to yourself. Uh, but right now, New York City, I mean, everybody you know has got this damn Omicron. So it's like yeah. we're all just we're all just you know, some bars are packed. Some bars are empty. No one knows how to behave. Uh, I'm in the packed places and it's just survival right now and trying to get through the next few weeks. Yeah, I know the feeling. Unfortunately, the week of Christmas, I got the Omicron but <laughs> part of COVID. So wow. it was it was not fun. Um, <laughs> again, it's. It's one of those things we all have to deal with at the moment. But look, we have our sports to be able to kind of get away from kind of what real life is is like right now. Guys, anybody listening on Twitter, make sure you get over onto YouTube, onto the Irish Bear Show YouTube channel so you can get your comments in as we kind of go through some of the stuff. We will be talking about any of the rumors around the Chicago Bears. We'll be talking about the head coaching position. But mainly we will be talking about Ryan Pace because obviously that's been kind of the – Crazy storyline, I guess, this week. And it, it, it seems it's one of those weird ones where everybody is making assumptions, even though there hasn't been a real report that's actually been put out there. A lot of it is kind of the shorthand ideas. But before we go into that, we will just talk about some of the rumors that have come up this week. And look, Tony, I'll start with you. First rumor, I guess, going into the week probably was about maybe a day, day and a half ago with all this kind of Jim Harbaugh news saying that he could possibly want to go to the NFL. We've seen the Bears name being put in that before. We just had a show last week on whether Jim Harbaugh or Ryan Day would be a better fit for the Bears. So anybody that did not check that out, make sure you do. That's available on our YouTube channel as well. So when you heard about that, Tony, what was your first reaction when you're kind of seeing these rumors of Harbaugh possibly going back to the NFL? Yeah, I mean, I think it's inevitable that, that that's going to be spoken about. Um, you know, they're getting to this point in the season where things are beginning to peter off a wee bit before the playoffs start. So they're trying to get as many things to talk about as possible and put out, put out there in print. So I think it's inevitable that, you know, especially when you've got teams like, you know, the Raiders and the Bears, they're going to be looking for um, head coaches. Um, and and I think you know, that, you know, the Harbaugh, 
uh, Chicago Bears connection, it's always going to be inevitable that he's he's linked. So for me, um, you know, if the rumors are true and he's looking for a way back into the NFL, um, I think the most logical landing spot would be in Chicago. Um, and for me, I would be over the moon if that were to happen. Um, currently, um, he's him or, or uh, uh, Peyton would be a, a preference for me. I'm, I'm always, I've always been kind of after the the uh, the big time previous head coach and experience kind of guy for for this particular Bears job coming up in 2022. I think it's it's going to be ideal for us, perfect scenario for having Justin Fields here as well. So for me, if the rumors are true and he wants to come, he wants to come back. We're open arms, Jim. Come to us. I'll buy you a beer. Come on, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> very, very good. No, what about yourself? When you heard all this kind of craziness kind of go on this week, and look, it, it's inevitable because obviously it's Black Monday next week where you get to see there's always a couple of surprises of guys that get fired, but we kind of know, what is it, maybe four or five openings that are probably going to happen. And with everything that's gone on with Jim Harbaugh, it's always been one of those things that I think People have wanted to link him to the NFL because of his success with the San Francisco 49ers. He takes a pay cut going into this year with Michigan, and then they are, they have a, a pretty decent season. I know it's it's tough when you have to go go up always against Ohio State, Georgia, all of them to do really well. But they have a successful season. There suddenly there's all these rumors that he wants to go to the NFL. Do you think they're legit, or do you think that it's just maybe a bit of posturing by his agent to try and get him a that money back, I would, I would say, <laughs> yeah. from Michigan. Look, to be honest, you wouldn't rule anything out at this stage. The way the, the, the sport is run now, it could possibly be an agent looking to just, you know, put a bit of pressure on Michigan to, to get them that money back, as you say. But to be honest, similar to Tony, I think it's it's probably there's probably something to it anyway. I mean, I don't think generally these kind of rumors start because someone wants them to. Now, as you say, either they're trying to get the contract sorted or he's just putting feelers out there to see what kind of reaction comes back. Would there be interest? I mean, again, I'm, I'm like Tony. I When I heard the story, I know it split a lot of people on this, but I would be I would be happy if they went the Harbour route. Now, to be honest, I, I, I do think it's, it's such an important time at the moment now for the Bears. I, I think they need to get this higher and right. We have Justin Fields there who... Look, as we talked earlier, he's he's got 10 games or so this year, but it's really important next year that whoever comes in is really able to help him develop and, and take that next step. I mean, you look at what Harbour done in San Francisco at Kaepernick. I know I think I maybe seen the show during the week, as you mentioned, Kieran. They're not exactly the same player. We're not saying it will work for one, for the other. But still, he has that track record in the NFL with a young quarterback with that kind of athletic mobile talent. And he was able to kind of groom him so, I mean, if it is the case that he, he is up there, I would hope the Bears are interested and I would hope they're talking to him. I know the Raiders have been mentioned a bit as well. But look, as you say, it's it's silly season. There's going to be, even between now and Monday, there'll probably be a number of rumours that pop up. But I think it's possible. It's something I definitely wouldn't rule out anyway. Yeah, look, those, those rumours, inject all those rumours into my veins. I absolutely love them. I love the craziness of them. But look, the one thing I wanted to talk about with you, Jeff, because... I, I had this reaction when I was kind of reading people's kind of reactions to all this Jim Harbaugh news. I thought it was hilarious because Bears fans are going absolutely crazy and the reports are coming out were mainly linking Harbaugh to the Las Vegas Raiders and there were all these Bears fans absolutely losing their mind and losing their shit. And I was the one thing I kept coming up with, and I mentioned a few things on Twitter, one was that how people are completely dismissing him when he's put together a really good staff in San Francisco before, which personally for any head coaching hire, I don't care if it's an experienced head coach, a first time head coach, that's one of the most vital parts of the job. But then the second thing that I would say is like beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> We've been pretty bad over the last number of years. When you go from Mark Trestman to John Fox to Matt Nagy, and then there's people going to be kind of bitching about if someone like Jim Harbaugh would come in. It kind of makes me laugh. What was your kind of, I guess, opinion first of when the story came out, but then secondly, all the crazy reaction on Twitter from Bears fans? I, I'm trying to tune out Twitter as best I can. If it wasn't just like this useful idiot in my life, I, I wouldn't use it. Uh, Jim Harbaugh is one of the best football coaches in the world. There's just no doubt about it. And 
I know he hasn't achieved what he needs to at Michigan. I don't care about college football. It's not a real sport. So the Jim Harbaugh would come into Chicago and have his pick of coaches. Jim Harbaugh, the Harbaugh family knows everybody. He'd be selecting his offensive coordinator, selecting his defensive coordinator. He's an alpha. He's the head of your football pyramid, the top of that pyramid. He would give the Bears a new face of football operations, and it's something they desperately need. They need somebody to stand at the front of the room and say, this program is mine. They're going to need that starting Monday. And I think he would be the perfect. And I think he would take the job. Now, here's the thing. Call his bluff. If he doesn't want to actually come to the pros right now and he wants to stay at Michigan, why don't you see if seven years, $70 million changes his mind? Why don't you see if a seven-year deal with a shit ton of money, you're a $6 billion franchise, cash is not a big deal. Why don't you throw that offer at him and say, okay, you want to go back to Michigan? This is a ploy to get more money. We want you so bad. Here's the offer. And they should be making that offer. That He is the right guy for this job right now. And I think he's seen Justin Fields firsthand. He knows how good he is. Jim Harbaugh is not a guy who comes in with a system. right? He, he comes in with a philosophy. He knows how he wants to play football. Big up front, run the ball, control time of possession, physical. But he also wants to take his shots. And he knows how to coach football. He's the guy. Now, he does wear out his welcome. And so you have to understand, just like Bill Parcells and many other coaches, after year five, he might not be here anymore. But you're going to win a ton of football games in those five years because that's all he does is win. Um, so, yes, as for the fans who don't want Jim Harbaugh, all I can tell you is if you want Brian Dable instead of Jim Harbaugh, then we don't speak the same language because – Brian Dable and every other assistant coach who's never done it before is an absolute flip of the coin, except it's not 50-50. It's like a 12-sided die, and you're hoping to land on one number because most of them flop out. Matt Nagy was not some bold choice to be the head coach. He was chalk. He was the offensive coordinator of the best offense in football. He was chalk, and it didn't work out. So you just don't know. Uh, Mike Francesa, New York radio host for years, used to tell this great story about uh, Bill Arnsbarger who was the offensive coordinator for the Giants for years. And like the best, everyone said, foolproof, going to be a great head coach, flopped out in two years. You have no idea which guy can go from the technical aspects to the front of the room. Harbaugh has proven he can. And he'd be my, he would be my number one target from Monday morning. Uh, and I hope he's in the mix. I think the Bears are going to go try to get a GM in the mix first. And one of the questions I would be asking them is, can you get along with Jim Harbaugh? Can you get along with a big-time personality? Uh, but I'm, I'm a Jim Harbaugh guy. I think he's nuts, and he's hysterical, and he says crazy shit, and he'll be entertaining as hell to write about. And this is also supposed to be entertainment. We're supposed to enjoy yes. this. We got snoozers running the team now. How about some guys who say shit, and you go, what the hell does that mean? That's what I want now. We've had yeah. snoozers for years. They've all been snoozers. Tressman was a snooze. Fox was a snooze. Lovey was a snooze. Like, I just want some guy who says crazy shit. And you go, what is this? What's wrong with this guy? And then he wins. Give me that, that combination. But that, but that's it. Like, uh, I think this whole idea of him being at Michigan now probably it, it clouds a lot of people's judgment because you look at Michigan before he came in and they weren't even making bowl games. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I heard, I heard a conversation the other day of people who were saying that, oh, he's one and four in bowl games and all this. I'm like. Well, yeah, when you don't have a good quarterback at Michigan, you're probably not going to win against some of these kind of elite teams where you're looking at Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, who are getting all these number one recruits. Like, there was there were people saying, well, who has he developed over time at Michigan? And I'm like, the potential number one overall pick in this year's draft is coming from Michigan. Like, while it's on the defensive side of the football, it, like – what you're hoping is that Justin Fields is the guy. So all you have to do is develop him. You don't have to go in and choose another quarterback and bring in. Nope. So all you need to do is if he's like, like we said before, one of the best parts of for Jim Harbaugh for me was he's always been able to put a staff together that you're really impressed with. And I put this tweet out and it kind of just went crazy where if Vic Fangio gets fired from Denver, where do you think he would want to go? Not like, crazy at all. Our, I saw I saw your tweet. It's not crazy at all. It's going to be Jim Harbaugh's first call. Yeah, yeah. he's had Jim he Fangio for twenty he, years. They're like brothers. <laughs> first yeah, call is Vic Fangio. Exactly, and the thing is, like the Bears love Vic Fangio. So if he said that to them, they'd be like, "Yeah, go do it. Give him <laughs> whatever, whatever you want." And then 
the main thing would be you get whatever your offensive line coach and your offensive coordinator. Those are going to be the would be the two main hires for for Jim Harbaugh. But like you said, when you have the name, when you have the cachet, when you were in the NFL and you made a Super Bowl and you saw that you brought a team in San Francisco who didn't have a winning record since I believe it was 2002 when he took over, took over a six and 10 football team and had double digit wins each of his first three seasons and making a Super Bowl. And really, I will always stick to it. If those damn lights didn't go out, San Francisco win that football. Hundred percent. <laughs> like, so that's where I don't get it. It's like people. I hear the same people saying they don't want Jim Harbaugh, but also in the same breath say we want an experienced head coach. Well, like, there's there's not many other successful, experienced head coaches that are going to come in. Like, we want to, we like being able to talk about the Sean Payton, the Mike Tomlin, and all them because. Like Albert Breer and some of those guys have said, like, will the what's happening in college happen in the NFL? Most likely, no. Most likely, all those guys are going to stay where they are, and then you you have to then you're talking about well, there's guys that have been head coach before but have failed, but you have a guy here that while well, he moved to college because it was right for the right decision for him at the time, he's been to a Super Bowl in a short period of time with a team that really didn't have a habit of making the playoffs or making the Super Bowl. And that's where I just go back is how can some Bears fans just completely dismiss it straight away? Tony, I want to bring you in on this one because, look, I talk, I was talking to some of the guys last week, spoke to Anthony, all this, spoke to Corey about it. So, like, what is your opinion on that? Because I know that it's such a divided issue when we talk about Jim Harbaugh, but I've always been one of where – when he was at San Francisco, I was jealous that he was the San Francisco head coach. He goes to Michigan, and it was probably good for him to see that side, I think, because he had a, a good time with Stanford at the time, earlier on in his career. And he goes back to his alma mater. But really, when you don't have that quarterback, it's very difficult to be able to do quite well in that game. But like Jeff said, the college football game, the NFL are completely different. For people to dismiss him based on his college career, I think it's a little bit short-sighted because the two games are completely different. When he was a head coach in the NFL for four seasons and he was very, very successful in his stint at San Francisco. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's can't, it's not compatible um, at all. It's a totally different setup altogether. Um, and anybody who's looking at Jim Harbaugh and thinking that he can't be successful in this Bears. Though even with the where the Bears are set up just now, are it's crazy. You think about the San Francisco 49ers, they solid defense. Now the Bears, you think how well their defense is playing, considering we have no defensive backs available. It's remarkable, right? Okay. And a lot of that's obviously on our pass rush this year, which has been phenomenal. And big shout out to Robert Quinn for being shit hot all year and yeah. a comeback player of the year for me. But um he's walking in a situation where defense is pretty decent considering we do have some deficiencies um you can plug them he's got he's got a quarterback who is not too dissimilar to um uh, Kaepernick in the sense that you know he's a mobile quarterback oh, he, he, he can move he's not that type of quarterback but he can move you know either way he's he's a quarterback who's got tons of potential um and is someone who go far but for me and I've said this before on the show you get a guy like Harbaugh and the, the team you bring all that experience as Jeff was saying, you bring all those connections as well. If I get, if I go out there and and say, right, let's hire Kellen Moore to be the the head coach. I mean, he's been what three seasons as offensive coordinator, I think it is. He doesn't have the same connections. He doesn't have the same history, the same reputation that he's built up in the league as a coach, as a guy that you can work with in that capacity, like Harbaugh has. And for me, he's the best option by far. Um, there are, as you mentioned as well. Here and there are other options. You know, we got Todd Bowles, who could be a guy. Leslie Frazier is obviously a guy. Um, but for me, and it's what Jeff said, uh, he's an uh, Harbaugh's an, an alpha. He's a guy who's going to, going to go in there. He's going to run that team like it's his team, and that's something that will be missing. We'll be missing a, a kind of cutthroat head coach, guy in charge, get in there, make decisions. We're not handing out participation trophies. We're not making everybody a captain every week. Do you know, it's 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 a guy who's going to go in there and make his mark, put his foot down, and people are going to want to play for him. <laughs> if we get four years out of him, great. That could be a Super Bowl run right there. 
if we don't get any more than that, then fine, you know, we'll move on from there and, and sort something else out. But for me, I'm all over it. Um, I don't care what he did in college. I'm not a huge college football fan. I don't follow a lot of it, if I'm being honest with you. But I don't really think it matters anyway, because at the end of the day, there's um, there's empirical evidence to show that he can be successful in the NFL and in the right setup. And, oh, my God, if we got Vic Fangio back as defensive coordinator running that defense and with, oh, I'd be in heaven. I'd be in heaven. I'd be angry. Yeah, like, it's, it's interesting when we talk about he might, like, annoy people or kind of end up leaving after four or five years. The one, the two things that come to my mind, number one is he already has ties with the organization. So he already has that personal connection. So you might last a little bit longer if he's successful, right? The second thing is what are the most important years for the Chicago Bears right now? They're going to be the years that Justin Fields is on that rookie contract the next four years. So if you get a head coach, like you should be looking at a head coach that's coming in for the next four years because people need to remember head coaches don't last like they did before. Most head coaches, their lifespan in an organization is about five seasons because what ends up happening after that is that your voice becomes stale. It's different when you have like a Mike Tomlin, a Bill Belichick, uh, Sean Payton, because they've been there so long that all the players that have come in have come in under them. So it, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different, and they're able to change things up. But you look at it now, and about sixty percent of the league change head coaches every couple of years. If you offered me, it doesn't even have to be the name Jim Harbaugh. If you offered me what he did in San Francisco, even to a smaller level. They, what the way we've played over the last 10 years, how you'd be crazy not to take it. Like we talk about how people are saying he doesn't he hasn't developed people in in college and that the NFL was 10 years ago. I was like, well, yeah, he's been in college for six years. What the hell is he supposed to do? He can't coach in both. So it's one of those that kind of annoy me where we will like we will talk about what we want and other options because I think he's one that personally it would excite me as a Bears fan to see that there's actually a trustworthy and good head coach coming in and it's you're not going to feel like every single game you have the worst coach on the sidelines and I think that's really important for this team that you give the fans confidence for kind of going forward and I think that's really important look uh guys if you are joining us over on Twitter make sure you get over to us on YouTube we are displaying comments if you guys have any questions, if you guys have your own opinions on some of the stuff, I will put them up on the screen and we will discuss them as well. So make sure you head over to YouTube so you can get your comments in as well. Um, but yeah, look, what we do want to kind of talk about more so today than everything in relation to the coaches, we will mention it towards the end because we will talk a little bit about Black Monday as well and what we expect. Um but we do want to talk a little bit about the main story this week, and it's all been centered around Ryan Pace. So the biggest thing, and look, Jeff, I'll start with you because we've kind of spoken about I it. Figured, I, fig- I, I figured you might. Yeah. So like we, <laughs> we, we go we go around this and you listen to any sports talk radio, you listen to different podcasts, you listen or you, you look at people on Twitter and all the conversations around Ryan Pace is all about Ryan Pace and, people absolutely losing their shit because they're they see i think two reports or it started last week where ian rapaport came out and said that he hasn't heard much around ryan pace now that's not him saying that ryan pace is staying or ryan pace is going he just hasn't heard a lot there's other people that have said similar where i think brad biggs was one that came out and said that there's just there hasn't been a lot to assume that ryan pace is going and us as bears fans we go we take one to 100 where where we're like, okay, this means that Ryan Pace is staying. Now, I want to give you kind of an opportunity to talk about this because for me, I've always been 50-50 on this where ideally the Bears get rid of Ryan Pace, but I can also see that they like him as a talent evaluator. They like him in certain roles and within the organization. So I'm not going to absolutely rage if, he's still at, in the Bears in some capacity. Is it what I would want to happen? No. Ideally, you want a new GM and a new head coach working in tandem. So what's been your opinion of, I guess, the story over the past probably week and a half since 
these kind of Black Monday kind of rumors start to intensify and we're seeing now everyone losing their shit that Ryan Pace is expected. Well, people are saying that he should or that he could be staying. First, I'll say this. I would be 99.98% shocked if Ryan Pace is still the GM at Monday at noon. I, I think he is being fired. I have been told he is being fired. Uh, I have actually been told they are already starting to vet candidates to replace him. So uh, that is some kind of breaking news. I've been trying not to break it. I've been sort of tweeting around it for two days <laughs> as best I can. Uh, but uh, he is not coming back. No one should expect him to come back. Now, why did it take so long really is the question I think people are asking. And here's the, here's the thing. He hasn't been a bad GM, but he made two fundamental mistakes, and that was Mitch and that was Matt. And you just don't survive those kinds of mistakes in this league. When you miss on the second pick in the draft, that sets your organization back years and the Bears, think about it. If he hits on Mitch, eight and eight goes goes to ten and six. Eight and eight goes to ten and six. We're in a run right now of really good seasons. But the Bears got to a point middle of this season when they realized the season wasn't going to be any good, and they they would already decide on Nagy. They brought people in. They brought in outs consultant, Super Bowl winning people, to come in and say, "Tell us about our football operations." And it took them about a month, and the recommendations finally came in that the Bears could basically move on from Ryan. It was not, this guy needs to be fired. It was not, he has destroyed your football operations. It was nothing structural about what he was doing wrong. It was just, this isn't good enough. Results aren't good enough. And you can get what he's given you from many other guys in this league. So if you're going to bring in a new head coach, why would you ever do that flip-flop thing where you have an, a non, where you have the overlapping guy? The GM stays, the coach comes in. Then you fire the GM and let the coach the GM doesn't want. You don't want that. The recommendations that came through were make the change at once, have take them both out. Uh, I think Pace has done so. He's a really good talent evaluator. He has rebuilt Hallis Hall. Hallis Hall is a different place now because of him. He's a terrific leader. It just hasn't been good enough. And he's had seven years. You just don't get that much time and then have the playoff success, which is none that they have had. So uh, the move is going to be made. I've been trying to calm people down. People want these guys fired during the season for some reason, as if they've been 3-14 and 14 or 3-13 and 13 every year. They just haven't been. I mean, so uh, I've tried to keep quiet, but I'm not going to keep quiet anymore. He's going to be fired Monday, and I think his legacy in Chicago could be very different five years from now if Justin Fields turns out to be the quarterback we all hope he's going to be because he, he gave them that. And it's not a small thing. This next, As I said to you guys before we went on, we went live, this next GM has an easy job. If Justin Fields is the guy, this next GM is going to reap the benefits of having been handed a rookie quarterback in now in his second year. That's very rare in this league. So uh, I, I sort of, I tried to laugh at all the drama and the anger and the hub arcish stuff the hubs, in his own problems now, but you know, it's, it's it's hub's gonna just hang him up. It's not, hub, it's time. It's time. You get you're getting yourself in a pickle every week now. Um, but they are gonna move on, and I think his legacy is very complicated. Yeah, I completely agree. It's it's one of those that I think a lot of people have gone a little bit overboard too soon. And look, Tony, I want to bring you in on this one because. It reminds me very similar. Well, the cases are completely different because one, I think everybody knew one guy had to go. I'm talking about Phil Emery. There was no talk that Phil Emery was going to get fired when he did. Everybody expected Mark Tressman. He was gone. But then suddenly when the fact – it was the weirdest press conference as well when, but, <laughs> when Phil Emery you remember, got fired. Do you remember the last game of that season? Phil Emery was sitting next to George McCaskey in their box. The last yeah. game of that season, Phil Emery had no idea he was getting fired. No, I knew, but Phil Emery didn't know. And that was how, this is what these guys do. They wait till the end of the season. They try not to leak. I just got some friends who are good at leaking. <laughs> but, but that, that's it. Thank like, God. <laughs> but, 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 the, but, but, that, but that is it. It's like you... They're going to be so mad at me. If they see this, they're going to be so mad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like one of those things that you look at everything that the Bears have done previously, they, 
they never do it. Like the one thing that you can say, even Tony for Matt Nagy comes out and says that I've not been told that I've been fired. I'm the good source. Look, I think he knows that he's going, but he's also sick of all the reports saying that he's been told. Like he has been told. He has been told. <laughs> not only has he been told, but there was a cut. Con- God, I'm gonna get in a lot of trouble. But he the, the conversation is very simple. Do you want we're gonna get rid of you at the end of the season? Do you want to finish this out? And he is a very good man. Matt Nagy is a terrific guy, and he wanted to see it out with his players. I I understand why he doesn't want to admit it. It's it's emasculating to say, I know that this isn't my job anymore. I don't know why the media even really asked him because then you knew what he was going to say. He does know. Of course he knows. Have you seen him on the sideline? He just been told. You were told last Monday. I can tell you what time if you want to know. <laughs> look, so, look, we have, we have two minutes of breaking news then. So, Matt Nike is a liar. <laughs> he, that's not breaking news. That's not breaking news. <laughs> also, also can, I just, can I just add? Can I add? The guy has lied at every press conference for three years. Now he talks at this when he was wholeheartedly, oh, no, he's telling the truth now. No, see, see, he started He started one week before the end of his tenure. That's when the truth starts piling out. It's, it's crazy town. Of course uh, they told him. It, it, it's so funny. But look, Tony, the, the interesting one about Pace is everybody going crazy about it. When the same thing was kind of happening with Phil Emery, where we didn't know what was coming, what was coming at that time, right? But yet then the press conference happens and suddenly Phil Emery is fired. <laughs> and then he he looks like he's in complete shock. He comes back to the press room. And it was the most batshit crazy press conference. So like people need to calm down until it hits Monday. If people if it hits Monday and we find out that Nagy's fired and pace is there, well then lose your shit. Go ahead, chuck things against the wall. I don't care. But until it actually happens, there's no point wasting your breath being so angry over it when what you want could happen anyway, and it's most likely going to happen. Like at the end of the day, when you make two of those big decisions and they're both wrong, you tend to get fired. Look, George McCaskey may not be the best NFL owner, but he's not stupid. Like he's not an idiot, right? He not he makes bad decisions. Okay, he's made bad decisions, but like. He, I hate when people say he doesn't Jeff, want. Jeff, have you got some more breaking news to give? Us? <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, All I'll say is that while everybody keeps Ted Phillips, you everybody should be should be counting their lucky stars that Ted's been there for twenty years because that family couldn't run a Dunkin' Donuts on the highway like that. Yeah, that is a shaky group of people. They, I'm, I, this year I've heard a lot more stories because. A certain somebody is is on his way out the door in a year, and his family is a lot more willing to talk to me about the McCaskies. And man, the stories you hear about George are like, I don't know how we've, I don't know how the, the organization, I don't know how they they still have a team, I don't know how they still have a franchise. It's, it's a mess, and that's why this is this is a difficult decision. And George is going it alone on this one, and I don't love it. You you mean Jeff Bezos's team next year? <laughs> now, would they become the Chicago Prime? That, that would no. be, they could ch- change the name immediately. The, the there's got to be some look. Prime about us soon. There's got to be. There. We can't do Prime be, times. The 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 news could news never, he could never own an NFL team because he doesn't pay his employees, and the NFL players wouldn't go for it. <laughs> look, it is it is so funny. But look, Tony, I want to I want to ask you about I guess the reaction of everybody over the last few days in relation to Ryan Pace, because it's literally gone from uh, people talking about it last week to people raging about it this week. Yeah. So for me, I think the worst thing you can do is log on to Twitter and have a meltdown about what anybody says. I think what you should do is if you're that affected by anything that's on Twitter is you should delete the app and go for a walk outside somewhere because it's it's a total cesspit. Like, um, so yeah, don't get too wrapped up on things that you hear. For me, you know, and, and and I've been guilty of speculating throughout the season as well. We all have. Um, but, you know, I think the only thing you need to worry about, as you say, Kieran, is when it gets to Monday and we hear the official news, rather than speculating about what's going to happen. You know, we went through it with Matt Nagy, who was meant to be fired two weeks ago. He was meant to be fired two weeks ago before that because someone had heard something and someone had heard something else. And you know, and it turned out that wasn't going to happen. You know, as you say, the Bears aren't going to fire anyone mid-season. 
um, regardless of, of what anybody else thinks. It's just not going to be a thing. Um, but again, this is a story that was uh, fabricated to, you know, get people interested, get people clicking on things, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, when you have things come out saying, well, Ryan Pace is he's, there's likely he's going to be here next season, you know, and the, none of us other than Jeff and his and his sources are aware of what's happening. So for me, I was all I'm always going to be waiting for Monday morning or Monday, whatever time it is, and, and looking to see what actually comes out on the day. Um, because as you say, you know, when it comes to like uh, previous GMs who have had no idea about what's happening, maybe Ryan Pace doesn't even know that that's happening. You know, obviously Matt Nagy does, but Ryan Pace probably doesn't. And this is going to be another kind of surprise situation because the likelihood is that. Uh, I would imagine uh, the McCaskies have said to Pace, right, you'll need to go and tell uh, Matt that he's uh, that he's gone kind of thing because they don't want to do it because he's a really nice guy and they don't have the balls to do it maybe. I don't know. Um, and then after that, they'll say, right, we've got Ryan Pace to get him, get him out. We're going to say to Ryan Pace now, it's time for you to leave kind of thing, you know. So I think it's inevitable. I mean, we've all spoke about it that, that we think Pace should go um, and we've said it for weeks that Pace should, should go. He has obviously made significant contributions to the team. And as Jeff alluded to, the biggest one could be Justin Fields. Could be, you know. Um, and he's played his piece. If, if it does come to fruition that Fields becomes the guy, then he's played his part in that history and will be forever thankful for that. And I will not look back at Ryan Pace and say, you were a total shit show. I mean, yeah. You gave Mike Glennon $45 million. You know, you traded up one spot to get Mitch when you could have got two other better guys. You know, you hired Matt Nagy, uh, trying to be Sean McVay. You accepted John Fox. You accepted Jay Cutler. You didn't have the balls to make your own decisions. But other than that, you did very well, and you brought in some great fifth-round, fourth-round guys. And I'm joking. He's, it's not been all bad. It's, a lot of it's really, really been good. Um, and and props to him, and I'm thankful for for the stuff that he's brought to the team. But as Jeff said, it's just not been good enough. Seven seasons, you know, two playoff appearances it's, it's, and, and two playoff losses is not good enough. Um, and and no one should get that length of time in a position without some success. Um, and it all started in 2017 with the Trubisky thing. That was that was the catalyst that turned all this thing. And believe it or not, that's now five years ago <laughs> and he's still here so you know they've you can't accuse the mccaskies of being impatient and not letting things play out because it certainly has played out to a point now where yeah. if maggie's going he needs to go they're a package deal contracts apparently run out at the same time it's got to just happen it's got to just happen that should be it do they I know I know. I know I know. Listen, I, I've tried to dig that one out, and it's that's like that's like that's like looking for the holy grail. Like I'm, I'm Indiana Jones trying to find out the contracts. Nobody will talk about them. Uh, it is the strangest thing, but nobody in that organization will talk about them. Uh, I I happen to think that both contracts run out this year. I, that's my belief, uh, which is why they're this is going to be an easy sort of slice off. But. Uh, it doesn't. It, it, that contract stuff doesn't matter. You have a six billion dollar franchise. It doesn't matter. A couple million bucks don't matter to these guys. No, absolutely not. And look, it is one of these kind of interesting things as we do kind of weigh up everything that Ryan Pace has done. Look, no, I want to give you a, a chance to kind of talk about kind of I guess the reaction, the job that you think Ryan Pace has done. Because one of the things I heard there was a conversation trying to whether he would stay or go we've we've learned today where jeff has said that ryan pace is expected to be fired on on monday as well with matt nagy um when you kind of try and evaluate the overall job that ryan pace did i know people like to put ladder grades and all that sort of stuff on it. i'm i'm not too big into that but in terms of actually trying to evaluate the overall job we've spoken about the two critical mistakes drafting mitch trubisky and hiring Matt Nagy were the two biggest mistakes for him. And we all knew that that move up for Mitch was going to define his time in Chicago. If it worked, he probably would have a job for life. If it didn't work, he was going to be gone. And that's the way it looks like it right now. So if you're evaluating it now overall, what would you, what would you summarize his time in Chicago as? It's been, as Jeff said, he, he is not a terrible GM by any stretch of the imagination. 
but he has got the big decisions wrong when he needed to get them right. I mean, we talk about Mitch, obviously. Then just look in the first round draft picks in general. I mean, right from Kevin White at the start. I mean, I know people can brush it off a bit, but the whole point of a, a first round draft pick is you get a player who is, you know, an exciting, talented player on a five-year contract on low money. So if you miss on that player, what do you have to do? Well, you miss on Kevin White, so you have to go pay Alan Robinson. You know, Leonard Floyd doesn't turn out to be the player you wanted. He goes after three or four years. You have to go pay Robert Quinn. And it's this cycle. Trubisky doesn't work out. You have to go pay Nick Foles. So it actually, it all ties in. If you keep missing on first-round picks, you then lose that cheap exciting player and you have to go pay someone else to come in to do the job that should have been done for cheaper so for starters that's just that alone for me is terrible then he has things like the o-line he is neglected i know he drafts the odd you know second third round but generally you look at the the cap money in our o-line compared to any anyone else's and it's it's atrocious like you know you need everything starts up front on defense and offense you need both lines to be up for it on defense we have it that's great where the bears were defense you know we, we have that but the offensive line has been neglected and it's it's a mismatch i mean we were so worried about it going into this this off season and it turned out to be the case for a long stretch of time it kind of solidified a bit as it went on but you know it's still not good enough look at the defensive back situation we went into this year you know what i mean he's He's done good things in certain areas while leaving massive gaps in other areas. I mean, look at look what he's done at tight end from God knows when. How much money has he put into tight end when you talk about Trey Borton, Deion Sims, Shaheen being brought in? Jimmy Graham got paid a lot of money. He, in fairness to Graham, he was productive. He got a lot of touchdowns, but that was still a lot of money to put in to an old tight end, given all the other money he'd spent on all the other tight ends over the, the last few years. So for me, as I say, he's not terrible. He got some things right. He found some great players in the lower rounds, some players that have come in and contributed. But his management of the cap has become a bit of a mess. I know we look at it, we've about 42, 43 million, but that's going to be gobbled up when you take in Roquan Smith and then you lose half this roster and bring a new one in. You're not going to have very much after that. And again, for me, that goes back to, if you're a first round player is here, you don't have to replace half of them with massive contracts on other players in free agency. So for me, as I say, he's done okay. He's done certain things well. You know, we haven't had the worst, as as Jeff says, we aren't going to train, you know, train Tordin every year. I mean, they we aren't the giants, wins. basically. Well, we aren't the giants. <laughs> but again, you look at that then, you've got one winning season in seven seasons. That's yeah. that's not good enough. That's that's yeah. terrible. Like, I mean, his fourth season, I think we finished six and ten. And here we are now on his seven seasons, six seasons later, and we're six and ten. So what's what's changed? We're yeah, a poor no. offense with a good defense, goodish defense in certain parts. What's any different from 2015? You know, yeah, nothing. That, so sorry. Can I, just, can I just add one one thing to all this? And I think I talked about this last time I was with you guys. These guys got brought back in January. They got a rookie quarterback. In, in May at the draft, all they had to do was that night, the second you get Justin Fields, start trading guys yeah. and, and, and make the argument that 2021 is about a total rebuild around this kid. They would not be getting fired on Monday. They just wouldn't be. They were yeah. given. McCaskey gave them the reprieve, both of them. And what did they do all summer long? They committed to Andy Dalton. I mean, that, to me, what sealed their fate was – not understanding where this franchise is on the championship calendar because the minute they got fields, that thing restarts and now it's all about him. But they spent the summer and I listen, I harped on it nonstop. People would tell me to stop and I'd say, I'm sorry, this is going to define the franchise this year. They tried to eke out nine or 10 wins out of a roster with Andy Dalton at quarterback. I don't believe for a second they ever intended to play Justin Fields this year. I think the intention was to play Andy Dalton the whole year, try to get a wild card spot, and then go to, to Fields next year. That was not possible with this secondary and this O-line with an Andy Dalton offense. And you saw when Fields actually started making plays, it was all off script. It was all him scrambling around and creating and doing those remarkable things. They botched the summer so badly. And that's why I knew. I, I knew in about August. I said, these guys are going to get fired, and it's all their fault. Because I really do believe George McCaskey has no interest 
in doing what he has to start doing on Monday, which is going through this process again. I don't think he wanted to do that at all. And now he's going to have to because these guys tried to sell him on a, we can be a productive winning team with Andy Dalton. And, and, it, yeah. and it, it, it's sort of that same thing that Pace tried to do with Glennon back in the day. Oh no, we can win with Glennon. Anybody with eyes knows you can't do that. So it's just, it, I, I, it, it's this weird thing. How do you look at a draft and find Larry Borum and find Khalil Herbert, but not recognize that Andy Dalton stinks? Like those just seem like a, a smart football person would figure those things out, but he's got, he's just made the weird. Yeah. But like, even, even going on that, Jeff is even if you thought that at the start of the season, you got to the midway point of the season, you still didn't trade guys. And there were reports there that there was other teams that were interested in some of the defensive linemen that were with the bears. And they still decided not to trade them. They, ruined the relationship with Alan Robinson last season and they didn't try and make they didn't try and change that this year. Like everybody could have seen what was gonna come with Alan Robinson. Now you lose him if you're gonna have to spend money in free agency. So even with losing Alan Robinson and losing other guys, you're not gonna get a, a decent comp pick because you're probably gonna spend on a different wide receiver. You're gonna spend somewhere else which is gonna completely get rid of that comp pick that you're expecting to get. So it's one of those things that I, it is, it's one of those where you're not looking what's actually staring you in the face. And like you said, Jeff, if they decide at the start of the year, you know what, we're just going to build around this kid. We're going to build around the rookies that we've brought in. We're going to build around all the young players that we do have on this team. It's not going to be a very successful season, but we're going to build up. We're going to try and improve next off season. We're going to try and reinvest into the draft and into free agency and try and get younger and try and, build around the offense rather than the defense, you would have still had this really good production from guys like Robert Quinn, which that was a bonus because nobody expected anything of that at the start of the season. You'd have a lot, you'd have a different fan base right now where people would be like, for a team that was young and they won five or six games, not too bad. But because you tried to sell the fan base on sneaking into the playoffs for nine or ten wins and that you halted the development of many of your young players while trying to do that i think that pissed more people off like would like for example jeff would you be pissed off if the bears went six and eleven but tevin jenkins was starting once he came back larry borham started every game justin Fields started every game khalil herbert was in there with david montgomery even some of the later end picks thomas graham got to got to play once he was ready daz newsom got to play once he was ready i think people would be like okay, well, you're playing a lot of young guys. You tend to not win many games when that happens. I was trying to tell people at the start of the season, most rookie quarterbacks don't win a lot of football games. You just have to look at this year. Mac Jones is in a perfect position for him. But you look at Trevor Lawrence, who's an incredibly talented player. Where are Jacksonville right now? Zach Wilson, they're they're in a shit situation. I said last year, Justin Herbert had one of the best rookie seasons for a quarterback. They still only won seven games. So we could have expected that, but the problem was, as you said, the coaching staff and the GM didn't want to embrace that and they wanted to win. And often when you have a lot of veterans on your team, you have that pressure to win. And that's where they probably should have looked at this and be like, we need to try some guys and we need to get younger. And even if it costs us a win or two, there's really no difference between winning six games and winning four. I texted Adam Johns the second the field's pick came through. And I said, if they're smart right now, Allen Robinson and Khalil Mack are in an APB out to the league saying, who wants them? Because I, I don't doubt you could have got a back end of the first round pick that night for one of them. And you certainly could have got a second for Allen Robinson. And think about where they would be if they had found the receiver in the second round. I don't remember where uh, Elijah Moore went to the Jets. I think he was a second round pick. He was like, a second round pick, yeah. think of someone like him now in Chicago. But think of, uh, it, this was an opportunity for these guys to say we're starting over, and it, it, it all comes back to self evaluation. I just think they thought this group was better than they were, and and listen, if they don't blow the games to Pittsburgh and Baltimore, they're playing for a playoff spot this week. Yeah. Like they, 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 I mean, as crazy as that sounds, but the ceiling is still losing in the first or second round. They're not a championship roster. And they have been bad at self-evaluation, really, for a lot of Ryan Pace's tenure. And again, I think he could have got a reprieve and a couple of years here to build around fields. 
but they tried to do this this year that I just will never understand, which was to get to that 9-10 wins and sneak into the playoffs and prove to everybody that then the quarterback comes in next year. It was a mess, and it was it didn't make any sense to anyone, and now they're both losing their jobs because of it, and these jobs are hard to get. Yeah, at the end of the day, there's only 32 of them, so it, it, it is very difficult. Look, one of the things I wanted to do on, on the show today is to evaluate the entire job of Ryan Pace because, like like you said, Jeff, today, that the expectations that he's to be fired on Monday. So I think it's an important thing for us as fans to do because I hate the rhetoric where people are just like, Trash GM, didn't do anything. Only one playoff game or two, technically, when you kind of back your way in against the Saints last year. But it's actually good to kind of look at, I guess, the context around it. So where I was going to do this was to break it down into three main points. The first one is going to be free agency, because I think this is where most people have a problem with Ryan Pace. It goes to the players that he signed for the contracts that he signed them. Because a lot of people, when they talk about the draft, he made a a few mistakes in early rounds and then we talk about his scouting ability and all that sort of stuff so what i wanted to do is break it down from the moment that he was hired in these different categories and we can kind of talk about it so where i wanted to go first was with free agency so obviously we know that he was hired in 2015 and i'm only going to talk about kind of the main free agents that they signed 2015 did not get off to a, a good start for ryan pace to say the least. So the main three, so he spent $87 million in his first year. And those guys that he brought in were Pernell McPhee. So not great. I think, he had, I think he had 14 sacks in 17 games, which when you say in that concept, you're like, oh, that could be pretty good. But he was here for three three years. So that's the problem. Okay. These, these so, names are, are going to depress the hell out of me, aren't they? They, they are. So the second one was Antrell Roll. So that was, <laughs> that was another one. Yeah, he he signed him on a I think it was a one year eleven million dollar contract. So that was uh not good. Million. And then the third one, which I completely forgot about this guy, and then I remember that Jay Cutler was still the quarterback. So the wide receiver that he drafted. Can anybody remember who he or that he signed that year? The Eddie wide Royal. That's it. Eddie Royal, three years, fifteen million dollars. <laughs> So those one are, thing, one thing on the entrepreneur roll, eleven million dollars is just one million per entrepreneur rolls kid. I think that's how we. I think that's how that's we structure the contract. Yeah. yeah, Jesus, it's good that they didn't sign Antonio Cromartie then. Oh no, that was <laughs> one year. <laughs> yeah. So that was the that was the first year. It didn't get off well. And the one thing that you see about Ryan Pace, especially in free agency, it's very up and down. Because then in 2016, he spent $130 million. Now, there's some good signings here. So, actually, it's probably one of his best free agencies, I would say. So, you have firstly Danny Trevathan, completely worth it. He's got a second contract. That's probably his biggest mistake. He probably should have let him go after that first one. But four years, $28 million for for Danny Trubaton, who I believe just came off uh, the Super Bowl appearance that year as well. Um, you then laid on into, I think it was just before the season, they signed Josh Sitton from Green Bay when he got released for three years, 21 million. Jarrell Freeman was the other inside linebacker that they signed. I think that year he had a very, very good season, but then he, he had problems with many different things, especially injuries and some off the field things. You had Bobby Massey for three years for $18 million. And then probably his best free agent signing as the GM was Akeem Hicks. Two years for $10 million, which quickly went Arm. into an <laughs> extension. So, like, you go from one end of things in, his, in 15 to 16, where you can say he's made some very good signings and improved the team in that year. But the problem is... 2017 comes around. I was going to say, do we even have to talk about 17? These, it's these up and down years, right? And that's what we see a lot when you kind of go through this with Ryan Pace, especially in free agency. So he spent even more in 2017 and it was worse results. So the one that is just everybody's laughing at after watching the Giants and Bears game was when Ryan Pace gave Mike Lennon most of the money he's earned in, the, in his NFL career. He gave him a three-year, $45 million contract. And the worst part about this was I always remember the one rumor going into day one of free agency was 
that the Bears are interested in Stefan Gilmore. And you hear this for like two days, and then suddenly, oh, the first signing is Mike Lennon. <laughs> so that was a biggish <laughs> shock. You then bring in Prince of Mugamara for one year on a $7 million contract. These two next ones, look, Tony, I think you mentioned it already with Dion Sims came in for three years and 18 million. And the one that is, is a tough one as well, the safety that they signed that year, Quinton Demps for three years, 13.5 million. You so said some bad safeties, back. man. Jeez Louise. By, by the way, by the way, not only would Stefan Gilmore have been a better signing, he would have undoubtedly been a better quarterback. <laughs> I was going to say that as well. <laughs> Absolutely. But again, it goes to this inconsistency as a GM. And I think that really does summarize Ryan Pace when you look at this, because in 2018, so this is the now second year going into Mr. Visky when it goes um, – you have Alan Robinson was the first signing, which albeit was a very good signing. Trey Burton, who we thought was going to be a good signing, because that first year he looked pretty good, and then whatever happened before that Eagles game, it just completely messed them. Um, you had Taylor Gabriel, who was a good, good kind of third receiving option. Um, great, but the biggest, great, uh, by the way, Taylor Gabriel leaked more shit to me in DMs on Twitter than any <sighs> player I've ever experienced. He never stopped. DMing me like like literally <laughs> every game. I'm he hated Mitch more than Celtic fans hate Rangers fans. That that's what I'm like, that's, like, some, he, that's I, some proper he, hate there, Jeff. He was, he, was, he was DMing me from I think from the locker room because it was like the game was over 20 minutes and he'd be like, "Did you see that? Did you see that?" I'm like, "Yes, yeah, I, I missed you twice, deep." I'm like, "What do you want me to say?" It's like we all saw it. Taylor Gabriel was great. I miss him. That's Let's get him on the show. That's the kind of guy. We want more breaking news. <laughs> yeah. I can I could there's no doubt about it. I can get I could get you Taylor Gabriel. I'll make that my, my plan next week. Okay, let's do let's do <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> then the other two signings, obviously the person who shall not be named double doink, uh was one of the signs was one of the signings for four years, may I add, for 16 million. First of all, you do not pay a kicker 16 million dollars. I don't care who the kicker is. Kickers are not people. I'm just putting that out there. Anyway, and then there's Chase Daniel for the two years, 10 million. That was probably the quarterback that Taylor Gabriel preferred getting balls passed from. Um, but there we go. I wanted to say one thing, Cody Parkey, because I, 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 I don't get upset about stuff in the NFL. It's just like I, I treat it like an entertainment product. I really want the Bears to win. I get very excited about that. That today's show appearance is to me – one of the repulsive moments in the history of the league for him to go on that television show and make it about oh, his faith and how he believes in himself. You missed a chip shot field goal in a playoff game. It wasn't heroic what you did. It was terrible. You're a non-factor on a football team. and You go on the Today Show, I'm still upset about it. Uh, like at the end of the day, like, that wasn't. it wasn't even like his first time hitting the post. I'm like... Dude, how many times are you aiming for the post and hoping it goes left or right? Like, God's sake, like it's that's one of those where it's in your head and you can't get over it. But look, you look at even the last kind of three years or so. So like 2019 it was an okay one. They didn't have a lot of cap space in this year. So you'd Corderell Patterson, haha Clinton Dix, Buster Screen, Mike Davis. So a fairly kind of average enough weren't any absolutely terrible signings. I know Mike Davis was cut because they wanted to get that comp pick. Um, but then free agency in 2020. Now, what we think was absolutely horrific, this year one of those signings turned out pretty good. <laughs> so you have Robert Quinn was the main one. Five years, $70 million contract. First year, had, apparently had dropped foot, wasn't, wasn't looking good. This year, breaks a franchise record for sack. So you kind of have to give that in, in the win column. You have Artie Burns, one year, $1 million. There's basically nothing. Jimmy Graham was the problem. You got two years, $16 million, one. There really wasn't anybody else going in for him at that, especially at that price level. Uh, Jermaine Effetti, who was still here. Demetrius Harris, I forgot that we signed him. That was that was one of those. And then oh, he, was, he, he, was a, he was killed a lot last year, if you remember. Like People hate Demetrius yeah. Harris. Because he was getting all these reps and dropping a ball all the time, and like he was like the Twitter vitriol candidate for like a I good think, couple I months. Think, I think Demetrius Harris was like the Andy Dalton of this year because you were stopping Cole Komet from getting some of the balls, so like everybody was just so pissed off with it. But then, like the last one that they got was to Sean Gibson, who got re-signed this year. He's had a he steadied the ship, I think, at 
beside Eddie Jackson at safety. This year then, obviously, Andy Dalton, one year, $10 million contract. Jeremiah Atachu, who got injured just before the season began. Angelo Black Blackson has been um, a pretty good depth piece, you would say. Again, Deshaun Gibson was resigned. And then probably their best signing, um, and nobody really expected it, but Jason Peters for just absolutely helping this offensive line when it was in complete tatters. But the reason why I wanted to break this down was because it actually Impressive. does – it, no, it encapsulates Ryan Pace's career as the Chicago Bears general manager because it's a similar pattern with the draft because you're having one year where you look at the draft picks and you're like, Jesus Christ, what was he thinking? And then the next year, you're like, oh, that was pretty good. It's the same thing with free agency. You tend to have one year off, one year on. The one thing that I have that if Ryan Pace didn't get fired now, as Jeff has mentioned, that the expectation is that he will on on Monday is that first year that after that first year of Mitch Trubisky, they went out and they did try and target guys that could help on offense with Alan Robinson, with Taylor Gabriel. So there is that side of things. So look, Tony, I want, I want to bring you in on this one. When when you look at Ryan Pace, especially when you kind of hear some of those things about free agency, some of his misses, some of his kind of hits i guess do you see it as kind of even or do you think that the problem with him is not the contracts that he gave it that he's been given out but it's actually to the players that he gave it to i think if you look at the guys that you just mentioned and he's done particularly well on hitting and some of the guys that wouldn't be the marquee signing Oh, in, in free agency, like you talk about Akeem Hicks, for instance, you know, that there's a guy that wasn't wasn't going to be the the the, the big name that 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 we signed that year, um, you know, guys that he signed this year, a lot of you know, Angelo Blackson, we're talking about guys like you know Mario Edwards Jr., who arguably you know, he gets himself into bother from time to time, but you know, a lot of the stuff that he's doing around that kind of mid level is pretty good, but it's some of the bigger ones that he's getting wrong, as you say. It's the you know the huge contracts for quarterbacks, the huge contracts for um, uh, tight ends, and all these kind of things. And it's it's those ones that he seems to get wrong, and it mirrors the issues that he has in the draft as well in terms of the first and second round picks that he's taken versus the fourth, fifth, and sixth round picks that he's taken. It's almost as like trying to evaluate top talent can be a bit of an issue, but trying to evaluate guys with potential. To go someplace isn't so much of an issue. Um, so I th it has been a bit hit or miss with, with free agency. Um, and, you know, you look back at some of the seasons and you think, God, that was a depressing off-season. Like, you look at the kind of guys that we got in place. But the problem we have here again is that Pace sometimes is looking at his roster and going, yeah, we're good enough to, to do this. We're good enough to do that. So I'm not going to go, I'm not going to push the boat out too much and bring in a kind of top name talent and all this kind of stuff because, and that, that that's very reminiscent of this season in terms of him looking at his roster and thinking he can win games. Um, and, and here we are with six wins again. So clearly that's not the case. Um, so I think, I think it's been a bit kind of hit or miss. Um, I think the overall thought here is though that pace, um, is 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 a bit of a, an average GM in general. I don't think he has all the answers. Um, the thing is, though, with Pace, is I'm not willing to give up on him in his career because he's a young guy. This is his first kind of proper big gig. I think he's going to take what he's learned from the past seven years, and he'll probably get another job at some point down the line. Uh, you know, whether he immediately goes back into a, a GM situation, I don't think so. But he'll get something else in some sort of player evaluation situation. And I think he can do well. You know, I think he's got a level. And I think we've tried to kind of bring him up and go, you know what, we're going to give you a chance. Young guy, potential, let's see what you've got. And it's not worked out, you know. And I don't ever grudge people or the Bears for taking a guy like Ryan Pace on because you've got to take chances with some people and look at potential and see this could work. Um, but unfortunately, we got that part, or not we, I'm not the Bears, but um, sorry, I've I've spoken too much, and Jeff has just decided to leave the <laughs> chat, apparently, so, um, but yeah, <laughs> but he's back, he's back. What just happened? 
I don't Jeff, know I thought I thought you'd had enough of what I was talking about. You oh, no, oh. I, I I literally tried to, to I like I see comments over here and I wanted to weigh in, so I hit a, a button that I thought would help me weigh in, and it went dark and I panicked. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, see, Tony, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did that to you. Just to just to wind up on that point, though, um, my wife just brought me a whiskey, right? In this really weird glass. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's, like, it's like a chalice. Put the whiskey so, in the Chewbacca cup. Right? Why is the whiskey not in the Chewbacca cup? Uh, I could put it in the Chewbacca cup instead. That put it in the Chewbacca cup. <laughs> <laughs> my, Sorry, first thought, when, my first thought when you lifted that cup, I go, does he have a cup that's his own face? And then I realized it was it was hair on the entire face. <laughs> oh, there it is! There it is! Oh, there we go. What were we talking oh, about? I don't know anymore. So Chewbacca, what were we talking about? Never talking mind. about Jeff I Jeff Ireland could be in the next GM. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. But look, Jeff, one of the questions that I wanted to ask as well is I was listening to kind of interviews from 2015 on when Ryan Pace was starting to become Bears GM and one of the biggest things that people or even that Sean Payton was kind of trying to advise him was that it was there were going to be more opportunities for him and the Bears job probably wasn't the right decision at that time do you believe that Ryan Pace was right in taking this job because like we said it's one of 32 GM jobs and you never know if you're going to get it but now looking back at his career, the inconsistencies of him as a GM, it, it kind of makes sense as a young GM coming in, you're going to make mistakes. He made a lot of mistakes early on. And like you said, the two biggest mistakes that happened were Mitch Trubisky, Matt Nagy, and probably that inconsistency from him. And like we said earlier on the show, not seeing what is in front of you is going to cost him his job. Let me ask you a question, Kieran. I think it's important. If, Cody Parkey makes the field goal. Do you have any doubt that team could get to the Super Bowl? No. Like I they mean, had just I mean, manhandled they, they, they had just manhandled the Rams a couple of weeks earlier. That team's making a run. And I actually think Mitch's career would have been different if Cody Parkey makes that kick because of how good Mitch was on that final draft. I think so much of a of a personnel guy in this league comes down to luck. I mean yeah. Mitch Trubisky was Mel Kuyper's number one quarterback in that draft. Mel Kuyper doesn't do anything else. He combs his hair and he evaluates college prospects. And that's it. And that was his number one guy. I've always said about Ryan Pace, it wasn't like he was taking shots. He went no. chalk on these picks. It just didn't work out. I think he's done a good enough job with this roster that if he had the top quarterback, they'd be winners. He didn't get the top quarterback. And that's it. And so I think he's finally took the job. He's going to get another job. He's very well respected around the league. Uh, he'll probably go back to the Saints. I would think his next out will be back in New Orleans. But, yeah, I, I just think sometimes you, you just don't get the luck you need in the right spots. I mean, Leonard Floyd is a great example of that. We've never seen in Chicago the Leonard Floyd that they're seeing in L.A. That's not Ryan Pace's fault. You know, Vic Fangio had Leonard Floyd. Chuck Pagano had Leonard Floyd. Why did we not see the Leonard Floyd they're seeing in L.A.? That there's, there's so many factors about a personnel guy. You know, uh, Jason Light down in Tampa Bay. They didn't make the playoffs for a decade. A decade. He got four coaches down there. And then all of a sudden, Tom Brady shows up. He wins the Super Bowl. It, it's, it's about the quarterback. It's always going to be about the quarterback. And he got the quarterback wrong. And usually when you do that in this league, you don't survive. If you could go sign Tom Brady, you do. And I think I think that's that's the issue the Bears are facing now, which is one of the reasons I'm, I'm a little surprised that the Bears are moving on because they gave him a second quarterback, which teams don't usually do in the draft. So uh, I, I think he had done enough here to show a lot of teams that he knows how to evaluate talent. He'll be a... Uh, personnel probably a college personnel guy would think is way better at that as we just saw it through free agency he's way better at the yeah. college stuff than the pro stuff uh but yeah i i just think i think that mitch pick sank him and i think mitch sank matt i i, I honestly think Nagy got so frustrated with the years of trying to get mitch to do the things he wanted him to do it just never it just never came to be 
and disappointing because I would have liked to have seen Pace stay here for like 20 years. Like, I, I, he's a young guy. It would have been great to see him hang around for 20 years in that job and watch him develop. But I understand they have to move on now because just because just he got the, got the big ones wrong and you can't do it. Yeah, and it is interesting when you do talk about kind of those – those first round picks, and he he did go chalk because even looking through them, I know a lot of people always kind of criticize him for a lot of his first round selections. And if you go through it, like in 2015, look, selecting Kevin White, I think where he was ranked to go in that draft was seventh, and where were the Bears picking seventh? So that was chalk. Everyone knew the Bears were going to go for. Either I can't remember who the other wide receiver was in that in that draft. It wasn't Calvin Ridley. Who was the Amari Cooper? Uh, Amari Cooper. That was it. So it was Amari Cooper and Kevin White. And we all knew that the Bears were probably going to target one of those. And the fact that Amari Cooper went just before Kevin White comes in, people were talking about him being in that kind of I think it was the rookie camp, or maybe it was OTAs, and he was looking pretty good. He was looking healthy, he was looking very athletic. That it looked like the guy that we were seeing in college. The injuries you can't account for that when they don't have them in college and it it's it was a problem but that was the first one then like you said jeff leonard floyd was the first i think major move because it was the first trade up that ryan pace had done but when you look at that draft like that was a terrible first round like there wasn't many one of the worst ever yeah one of, yeah, the, one worst of the worst ever, ever first yeah. like it was it was terrible so like no matter where he went there Whoever he picked in that first round, people would be criticizing because everybody was terrible. So that was one of the problems. Then you go in and obviously the biggest problem was the 2017 one with Mitch because in an ideal world, you trade up and you get either Deshaun Watson or Patrick Mahomes and the whole story is completely different. 2018, Roquan Smith, again, shock. They were going between uh, Quentin Nelson and Roquan Smith and that's the way it came down. 2019, obviously after the Khalil Mack trade, the first pick that they had was in the third round where they traded up for Devin Montgomery. Pretty good player, I would say. <laughs> so, like, there's there are moments of that you look at in 2020, but in the first round you have Cole Komet and Jalen Johnson. I know some people would have their reservations about Cole Komet, but Jalen Johnson we've seen has risen to be a very, very good player. Then in 21, you have Justin Fields and moving up. We all have positive vibes about him. We can talk about there's misses and there's hits in later rounds. And that's important, but it does come to those early round picks. And like you said, Jeff, the biggest killer for him was the Mitch Trubisky one. The one thing, the other thing, and this is where I wanted to go with kind of the trades aspect, because this is one of the other things that I think it, um, I think one of the things that, Bobby said in the comments here was trade trades up when it's not needed and waits and waste future potential. So this is one of the reasons actually why I wanted to go through some of the trades that he has made, especially in the draft, rather than just talking about kind of in terms of because there wasn't actually a lot of trades that were made. I know the Khalil Mack one is the main one, but all the other ones are pretty small trades here and there. At the start of his career, he traded away a bunch of guys like Brandon Marshall. He traded away uh, Jared Allen at that time, uh, Martellus Bennett, just to try and get rid of some of these kind of culture guys that didn't fit the organization at that time. But when we look at the draft, most of the guys that he traded up for were actually good decisions as a whole. Mr. Trubisky is the one that kind of completely destroys his kind of reputation in his career. But if you look at the other players, so 2016, we, we said that he traded up for Leonard Floyd. He traded down in the fourth round and he ended up selecting Nick Kwiatkowski. Um, he, or sorry, he traded up for Nick Kwiatkowski. He traded down twice in the second round and got Cody Whitehair. So three, I would say, semi-productive players. Obviously, the 2017 draft was the problem with Mitch. He traded down and he ended up, I think in that one, he got Adam Shaheen and with the other pick that they got, they got three Cohen on that one. Traded up for Eddie Jackson, who, again, had a very good 2017, 2018. Tr struggled then since that point. Um, in 2018, he traded up for Anthony Miller, who we thought had a lot of potential in, that, in his rookie season and kind of halfway into that second season. But then you look at since then, all the players that he has traded up for since 2019. David Montgomery, 
Travis Gibson, Darnell Mooney, Justin Fields, Tevin Jenkins. Now, you look at those and while you say you don't need to always be trading up for players, I personally prefer my GM going up for a guy that they believe in rather than you waiting and then suddenly you don't get your player. I always get burned from that year of Phil Emery where everybody and their mother knew they wanted Aaron Donald and they waited, they waited, and they had pick 20 and on pick 19, the Rams selected Aaron Donald. I prefer to have a GM that knows that this is the player that they absolutely want and go up and get them. Because look, if we didn't, we wouldn't have David Montgomery right now because we didn't have a pick that was even close to that pick at the time. You look at some of the fifth rounders that he's traded up for. Travis Gibson and Darnell Mooney are going to be two very important players moving forward on this football team. Darnell Mooney has already shown that. We're hoping that the picks that he traded up for, Justin Fields and Tevin Jenkins, that we won't give a crap about those picks because they'll be either left or right tackle for, for the future for the Bears and your quarterback. So I never had a problem with the players per se that he was trading up for or the rationale behind it. The problem obviously is when it doesn't work, you look even stupider. And that's where we talk about with, with Mitch. So no, as, as we kind of conclude this kind of talk about Ryan Pace, like I think the the key word for me has always been inconsistency with him. You can look at his decision-making and on many of his decisions, there's rationale behind it where you can actually get behind, but it always comes back to, the trade up for Mitch Trubisky. And the reason for that is because he built everything on the back of that trade up. So the Bears obviously made that selection, didn't have many more picks in that draft, then didn't have the best of seasons in that 2017 season. But then select Roquan Smith in round one of 2018. You have it, people are pretty excited about the draft that you just had, and then suddenly it hits. August time and you trade for Khalil Mack and everybody's going crazy and the Bears have a fantastic 2018 season. So when you look at that, the one misevaluation that he made or the main one was Mitch Trubisky. So when you see it as a whole, what, as Jeff said, with Ryan Pace expected to go, what would be your kind of main takeaways from his time with the Chicago Bears? I think he said it there, inconsistent. <clears throat> and I think Tony said the, the words hit and miss there earlier on. And that's that's mainly a lot of what it comes down to. And unfortunately, the misses were, and the one specific miss, but the misses were just a little bit too big to, to, to come back from. As as Jeff said earlier on, like that that's a, if you miss with the number two pick on a franchise quarterback, that is a franchise killer for, for years to come because you know, you're invested in that number two pick that that is supposed to be your future. That's supposed to tidy up that position for the next 10 years and let you build around. And once you miss on that, and as you say, you make the move for Mac, so you give up those draft picks to get Mac and the money to get Mac. So you're committed then, you know, Trubisky has to work because of the way everything else is set up around. And unfortunately you, you just cannot miss on, on that. And that's the problem. And then, as mentioned, when, when you add your head coach in and the head coach just doesn't work out for whatever reasons, you know, you tie that up to the quarterback. And that's, I mean, that's that's a killer. Like, you know, it's it's very, very difficult to come back from that. And unfortunately, he, he just, over time, he couldn't. I mean, as we said, it was never horrible. We were never the Giants, you know, that kind of way. It was just middle of the road and it was never getting better. And you just don't see, after seven seasons, you, you just... It's it's time to say, look, you've tried it. Things have gone your way. Things haven't gone your way, and I don't really see where you go from here. You know, you, you you've taken all the shots you can, and that's that's it for me. Inconsistency. I wish him all the best if he goes, which I'm sure he will. As the guys say, he will stay in the NFL, not a GM straight away, but he could work himself back up there. But he's he's young, smart. You know, this will be a massive for just for his career. This should be a massive experience that he can take with him and look you'll see him again down the road somewhere probably but I think in terms of Chicago inconsistencies are a killer and and you know you just got to move on from there yeah absolutely look we're going to move on a little bit to our kind of our last kind of point of, about kind of Black Monday and before we do just in case there's anybody new that's listening I'll, I'll kind of give the floor 
to yourself, Jeff. And if you want to kind of just reiterate what you were able to say earlier on the show in terms of what you've heard about Ryan Pace and, and Matt Nagy as we head towards that last game of the season, heading towards Black Monday. Uh, they're both going to be fired. They're both going to be fired on, on Monday. They could even be fired Sunday night. You, you never know. Uh, I think George McCaskey ultimately weighed – he loves Ryan Pace. He absolutely loves the guy. But I think he weighed the onslaught of media he would get and was the risk-reward there. And honestly, you can – every GM – has the successes that Ryan Pace has had. Every one, we don't follow in, in, in intensely the Houston Texans, but I'm sure Nick Casario found some fourth and fifth round picks this year that they're really excited about. So every GM kind of does that. And so you can replace Ryan and get that production from the position. If he had kept Ryan, I think he would have faced a media onslaught that would have been relentless. Uh, and it would have been every day, and they would not have trusted it. So I think as a group, as an organization, they've made the decision to move on, uh, and they're going to move on from both. And I think this process, by the way, is going to go fast. I, I would not be surprised if they're, if they're not interviewing candidates in the middle of next week. I, I think they're going to move fast, get a GM in place, and have that GM involved in the head coach interviews immediately. They're going to they're gonna move quickly next week. That that's very interesting. I, you would hope that that would happen, and I guess my main question to you then is, how confident are you that they can, I guess, interview the right guys for the GM? Like, what is to because like before they had to bring in Ernie Acorsi to just get like to know who to interview. How confident are you that they'll do the right search for the GM so that you can get the right head coach for this football team? Based on the names I'm already hearing, they're they're on the right path. Uh, okay. Hearing names like Ed Dodds in Indianapolis, Brian Gain in Buffalo, uh, Jeff Ireland in New Orleans, these are the right guys to be bringing in. These are these are pros. And yeah. again, they look at this job as if they believe in fields. This job's not that hard for them. They're yeah. just all oh, it's just support job. Get the right guys in place and pick the right coach. And if Fields is the real deal, this team's going to win starting next year. Uh, their schedule is great next year. This team yeah. is going to win quickly. So uh, I really believe this is a great job for a personnel guy and a great job for a coach because the winning should come quickly. Yeah, especially when you do look at kind of next year because we spoke about how difficult the schedule was this year and you could realistically say, like let's say the Bears do win against the Vikings. We just spoke about how they blew the game against Pittsburgh and blew the game against Baltimore. In such a tough schedule, you could have actually won nine football games. Like, and that goes to show that they're with the current team the way it is built now. There is actually a limit to how many games you, you'll win with this team. That you're not going to be that three, four, five year kind of this three, four, five or five, five win team. You're probably looking at, at minimum, you're looking at kind of the seven, eight, trying to push forward. Obviously, if Justin Fields is who we think he is, then you actually do have a, a genuine chance there look there's two questions in in the chat that i'll i'll put to you jeff as well one of them, one of them is from alan so he goes any word on ted phillips and if i know last year there was all these rumors that oh ted's gonna retire and all this sort of stuff i would assume that that wouldn't happen until a gm was firmly in place where they felt comfortable about their football operations department i don't think you, you could probably do this now and like you said leave george by himself for for all of this don't be surprised if when they make these changes on monday they announce that the gm is reporting directly to the ownership yeah uh, don't be surprised if you hear that uh and, and i believe that ted will retire in 2023 i don't know when they're going to announce that but i think he has one more year in the organization and then he's going to retire that that makes sense one of the other ones just based on one of the names that you did say for for GM, if it would happen, if Ireland was hired, do you think that there is a good chance that Jim Harbaugh would be one of those options that he would go for? I got to be so careful. Um, <laughs> listen, let's take Ireland. Let's take Ireland out of it, right? Let's just say okay. of all the names that you've heard, right? And anyone. Listen, the Irish beer show. We need to I know. I know. I, 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 I know. We're, we're, <laughs> We're one thing I can you. one thing I can guarantee you guys is that I can get you Jeff Ireland to be on the show. Uh, I, can call him up, I can get him on here right now. Uh, what listen, about? 
Jeff is uh, one of the best talent evaluators in the whole of the league. He just operates on a different level. And he loves Jim Harbaugh, uh, but there are people inside the Bears who love Jim Harbaugh too. So the percentage, listen, I, I think if if you're serious about Jim Harbaugh, you've got to be very careful with who you talk to in this GM search because yeah. Jim's personality is a circus. I mean, he's kind of a lunatic. So, you know, you wouldn't bring in Bill Parcells as your head coach and put a fiery alpha as the GM because you'd be asking for it. So if there's serious fun, about Harbaugh, <laughs> oh no, it'd be great. I, I'd have content for days. But yeah. but it, it is something to think about. Um I, I know that Jeff Jeff quite likes Jim Harbaugh. Uh so yeah, I mean that's listen, that's my combo. I, I've been coyly be... tweeting about it for, for for a month. That's my combo. So uh yeah. but I also think guys like Rick Smith and Ed Dodds and, and Brian Gain and these are these are great, great personnel guys. And I, I just don't think it's that I, I'm going to say it's an overrated job. It kind of is because for the next four years, you've got the quarterback there, at least the next yeah. three. So it's just hard, about that's supporting. That's the hardest thing because yeah. we talk about it all the time that usually when there is a GM and a head coaching firing, it's because your team sucks and doesn't have a quarterback. And it's up to you to go and fight with. That's what happened last time. You had Phil Emery that was leaving. You had Mark Trestman that was leaving. And – you have to have that job of trying to find the next quarterback. Problem is it took way too long for the Bears even to make that move. So that was one of the issues that kind of came about. So it is definitely interesting. Some of the names there would be very intriguing as a Bears fan. And it, it kind of is similar enough to what we heard when kind of the Bulls started making some of their moves where it's like they're actually talking to credible front office people that you can believe in. And I think that's one of the interesting points. Like, I hope that I hope they're just smart on this and don't don't just try and do what they've done all before. It's like take your if you have to take your time with the candidates that you bring in to interview, do that. You should be interviewing candidates even if you don't think they're gonna get the job because you need to get all the information. And that's what I think is really, really important. But look, that's that's one of the things. Look, when we go to Black Monday, and Tony, I want to bring you in here. When we talk about this, and we will kind of be doing a show on Black Monday, kind of breaking down everything that happens, probably laughing at whatever comes out in the press conference, because that's usually hilarious as well. Last year, I think we would have been ripping all of our hair out after what was going on. Anthony would have grown some hair back just to rip it out again. Like, when we talk about Black Monday this year, if there's one thing you want to hear or you want to see that the Bears do or any rumors that come out in relation to the Bears, what would it be? It's simple for me. There, there's nothing nothing too cryptic here. It's just Matt Nagy's gone and Ryan Pace is gone and we're starting again, basically. Um, and but, but at the same time, we're not starting again, as Jeff's saying, because we've got a really, really good core there, a really kind of promising um, outlook for the team in terms of the quarterback defense isn't isn't um isn't to be sniffed at either and it's just about you know getting the right pieces in round about bringing the right personalities in there getting the right offensive scheme in there um you know so for me if those two guys are gone then that that's the kind of passing of the torch in sense of moving from from the old regime onto whatever the new regime is going to be the thing is well just talking about you know the pace of how things are going to happen, no pun intended. Um, with the, you know, we're talking about the, the two-week period where you could have had it interviewing candidates, you know, this week and next week, or this week and last week, rather. Um, people are worried that we're kind of missing out on that. And, I, and at first I kind of thought, oh, we're missing out on that as well, but we're not really missing out on anything because no one's going to appoint anybody in the next two weeks. The likelihood is everybody or most guys that are going to be interviewed have been interviewed previously by the Bears. So really what you're looking at is interview tape, uh, you know, conversations, transcripts that were, were had. And it's only a two-week period anyway. If we're looking at the teams that are going to um, going to have uh, head coaching vacancies, then the Bears are up there anyway. So whoever is getting interviewed is going to say, well, I'm going to hang off and, and speak to these guys first as well and just see what they've got to say. You know, so... I don't think there's any rush really now on, on, on uh, retrospectively thinking about it. I don't think there's any rush for the Bears to be doing anything, um, even, you know, 
obviously firing Nagy and Pace on Monday is the first thing you do. But after that, you know, take your time, make sure you've got the right person on board. And that was that was one of the questions I had as well. Um, and it's similar to what one of the guys in the chat had said there was that, you know, we would we want hardball and we want all these. But if you get a GM in who doesn't want that guy in place, then that that's a worry, you know, because we've had it with Pace where, you know, the rumour is that John Fox was forced on him. You know, he was kind of made to take accept that. And the worry is, is if you bring in a guy who doesn't have um, any sort of clout about him, um, who's just happy to be there, a first time or GM or something like that, then you could have a situation where they go, all right, um, if you want me to take this guy, then I'll take this guy. And, you know, we'll just kind of go from there. You've got to have a guy that comes in there and says, this is my team and I'm going to make the decision. And the best decision is to bring on whoever it is, you know, and, uh, and if that happens, then I'll respect that, whether it's our boy brings in or it's not. But then, you know, you, you just, it's just, a dangerous situation we're in at the moment where I'm just like, oh God, what if we hire the wrong GM and what happens if we bring in someone, you know, that we really don't want a head coach kind of thing because they've got a really good feeling about them. So for me, Black Monday is all about getting rid of these two guys. But then for me, the kind of worry starts a bit there because I just don't know what we're going to do. And we talked about it on the chat the other day on WhatsApp. But it's like, just watch out, we're going to have some sort of CFL head coach announced like two <laughs> days later. So, <laughs> you know, we're going to let like, the market. I, 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 I believe my quote was that they were going to hire an XFL head coach. Yeah. That, that's, that's okay. Yeah. And Vince McMahon's well, going to be the general manager. <laughs> Tony, 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 one thing you said that's so true is that, and I was told this by someone and I didn't quite understand it at the time, was that. The coaches, the assistant coaches don't even want to interview in this period because they want to be prepared. They want to know about the franchise. They're in the middle of playoff chases. It's almost impossible. So it's another one of these NFL ideas that doesn't make a lick of sense. And uh, I don't I have the Jaguars actually officially. I mean, they put out interview requests on, I believe, me and everyone else in the, in the world. I don't think they had a single interview. So. No. Uh, I think it's all going to be at the end of the season and nobody's going to take a job before they talk to the bears. The Jags have Lawrence. The Jags have no income tax. That's big, but the bears are the bears. And I always say this, if you win super bowls with, with the Jags, people forget in a year, if you win super bowls with the bears, you open steakhouses. It is a, a job that lasts forever. If you're successful and all of these lifers, all these guys the Harbaugh's, the, the Ireland's, I don't know those names. Uh, they know that, and that's why it has the appeal that it has. Yeah, look, absolutely. It's that's why I think it's really interesting this year. When we when some of these names do start to come out because, like you said, even with some of the names that you've mentioned, Jeffrey, potential GM hires. I think when you see guys like that, you start to give them the benefit of the doubt, regardless of what coach that they bring in. I think let's say it was Jeff Ireland, he hires Jim Harbaugh versus if it was Ryan Pace and he hired Jim Harbaugh. I think you have a completely different reaction from the fan base. I think if you bring somebody in in a GM that people trust or are willing to give that benefit of the doubt with, very similarly to, I keep kind of referencing it just because of the big turnaround with the Chicago Bulls, that you get in Arturis, who nobody really knows a lot about in terms of we know his moves that he did in Denver, but like you don't really know all the other things. But when he starts to make these different moves and they all seem to work, he gets that benefit of the doubt where if he makes a, a trade or a draft pick or something in the next couple of years, people don't question it as much. But if it was John Paxson and, uh, and Gar Foreman and they did the exact same move, people were like, you suck, you can't do, you can't do that. And it's a similar thing for, for Ryan Pace, that even if it was the same head coach that they would bring in you would see a different reaction because he's lost all credibility or he's lost the trust of the fan base the thing is when you bring in a gm that people know when people know have done things in a successful way that they run their football team in a professional way you you kind of build up that bit of trust with the organization and with the fan base and that's what they need to do that's why like you were saying jeff like you're the ideal partnership that you that you had it'd be hard as a bear fan, even for me to kind of look at and to really criticize saying that oh, this is the wrong move or anything like that because you have to give these guys a little bit of the benefit of the doubt they're coming in 
Um, you can try and analyze all the positives and a potential negative, but that's really it. No, I, I want to bring you in as well because, look, it is important to be able to talk about this. We've spoken about kind of Jim Harbaugh. We've spoken about some of the GMs. Let's say it's not Jim Harbaugh and he goes to Las Vegas Raiders. Is there anybody else that maybe we've heard rumors about for even other teams or just the fact that they've been a candidate for some teams that you would be interested in the Bears even just talking to and, and interviewing? Because like we said, this two-week window was a, was a sham. Like the amount of coaches that said, no, nah, I don't, I don't want to hire because most – of these coaches that are that people want to interview their teams are going into the playoffs and that's the last thing that they want to be able to do so let's say what we've spoken about in terms of jim harbaugh wouldn't happen he goes somewhere else is there anyone in particular that you would be hoping that the bears would talk to come next week let's say it's wednesday or thursday of next week or maybe it's the following week if they take those days to do um their gm search um, I suppose there's been a few names thrown around. To, to be honest, I don't have any. Sp- I mean, there's a couple of guys I've been thinking about who maybe have had a bit of head coach experience because I think I've said before, I'm just not sold on the you know the next up and coming he- offensive coordinator who's you know he's the next big thing as we talked about earlier because generally they're not the next big thing. So my hope is they just I want to see someone with experience. We've seen a lot of even bit you know Nagy's decisions during matches and stuff like that during the game. You know, I want someone who's been there, who's done it, who who knows what they're doing. Uh, I guess Leslie Frazier has been mentioned. To be honest, I, I wasn't as mad about him when I heard the name mentioned, but I would still like him to talk to people like that. Um, I can't. I've completely blanked on his name. We talked about him earlier. He was a Jets head coach. Oh Todd yeah, Todd Bowles. Bowles. Todd Bowles. I, I do actually like the idea of Todd Bowles. I mean, I think look, it was the Jets. You know, <laughs> things things tend to go fairly wrong when you're at the Jets. So, I mean, I'd like to see them talk to, say, Todd Bowles, but just someone in that. Like, I mean, I want them to talk to a few people anyway because you want to get that broad kind of idea of who's out there, what people think of the, the franchise, what kind of ideas they have, what they would do. But someone like Todd Bowles, for me, would be someone I'd, I'd like to see them talk to. But I just – I'm not mad about bringing in a college coach with no NFL experience, and I'm not mad about, uh, you know uh, – Brian Dayball or, or some, you know, or this offensive coordinator, he's the next one. That, I mean, I think I think this is too important job now for the Bears. I mean, we already have our quarterback who we're trying to to teach and, and bring him into the, the franchise quarterback bracket. We hope he'll be. We don't need a head coach learning at the same time. No, obviously that head coach could bring in the right staff under him and that might not be an issue. But, I mean, for me, I just want to see experience. So someone like Todd Bowles, I, I wouldn't mind hearing them talking to if you yeah. want a college coach with uh, pro experience, you know, Urban Meyer now has pro experience. He's got a lot of experience. He's got a lot of experience. <laughs> Oh, oh what do you, what do you, I, you know, not to not to play host, but I I know nothing about him because I don't watch it. But what do you think of this Ryan? What do you think of the Ryan Day idea? Ryan Day coached in the NFL. He's been there for a couple of years, not a lot. Yeah. I, I, when the guy has no NFL experience, it's always a disaster. I don't know why they keep falling into these traps. But until you've coached millionaires, you have not coached because yeah, when you when yeah. you when you're handing the kid a bag of cash in his house in Mississippi and then coached him, it doesn't count. So until you've coached millionaires, you haven't coached. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they were interested in Ryan Day. I wouldn't be surprised if they talked to him. But listen, uh, just get a guy who could stand at the front of the room and get the best out of his players. Get the find a John Harbaugh, a Mike Tomlin. Nobody thought those guys were going to be what they were. They were not top of the line coordinators. One was a special teams coach. One wasn't even a coordinator. I mean, was Tomlin even a defensive coordinator yet? No, I'm not I don't sure think he was. So. No, I don't so think like, so. Just find the guy who motivates and gets the best out of his players because the Bears have not been doing that for the 10 years of these two guys. Yeah, to, to go on both to go on both points there, just that's where that's I think the reason why Jim Harbaugh for me goes to the top of at least to the high point of my list because I feel like he is the type of personality that can motivate this football team. So obviously it comes down to the coordinators you get in. But in terms of Ryan Day, because we, we did have this debate last week. We had one of the Ohio State um, beat reporters on as well to talk about this. And the one thing that we kind of came away with was that the one thing that Ryan Day does 
which I think is extremely important, is he tailors his offense and his defense to the talent that he has. So it's not, and the one thing that he uses, it's not like it's the same system all the time. It changes from year to year, and that depending on how his offense is going to be run based on the quarterback that he has, the receivers that he has, the type of offensive lineman that he has, he, he changes it up to suit his players. And that's the one criticism I think you can really put on Matt Nagy that he hasn't done that, that he hasn't catered his offense to the talent that he has. And that's what I think, that's where you're going to see Ryan Day is a potential person. Even if you don't, have, I've always said this, even if you don't have confidence that you're going to hire Ryan Day, I think he's definitely well worth an interview because you have his fucking quarterback on your team. Like, yeah. talk about what worked for him at Ohio State. Talk about all this stuff, what Justin feels like, because that might actually help you in your coaching search because you talk about how was he with the different coaches, what motivates him, all this sort of stuff. I think that's invaluable information even if you talk to ryan day and ryan day is not interested in moving to the nfl and you're not interested in hiring hiring him i still think it's an important thing to talk to him about it because like i said you have a, a guy that he coached for two seasons that he ha- had a good amount of success with i think that's really really important this is why i've always said for the head coaching position this year you do need to cast your net pretty wide you need to interview guys within the nfl that have been head coaches before you need to interview these kind of hot shot offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators. You need to hire, you need to interview guys like whether it be Josh McDaniels, Todd Bowles, um, a couple of the other kind of guys that have been head coach before, Dan Quinn, if you want to, just to learn all this different information, use that in order to make your decision. Look, <clears throat> if you've decided that there's a particular guy you want and you interview him and he interviews, well, okay, fucking go hire him. I, I don't care, do it. But you're at a point in time where you actually need to learn all this information about your team, or even this could be information that can be used going forward. And that's what I think is really important when we come out to this coaching search. What happens on Monday when Pace and Nagy go? The one thing I do want to hear from George McCaskey is that they are going to be conducting this GM search and that head coaching search will not start until that GM has been hired. Because I don't want to see the same thing that we saw before when Emery and Tressman were gone and suddenly you essentially knew that John Fox was coming in before Ryan Pace was officially hired. And that's not what I want to see from this organization. I want to see them do it in the right way because then it will give the fan base more confidence in the decisions that are going to be made. So look, to kind Here, of... Well, wrap, let me add, let me add yeah. one thing to that. I wouldn't speak on Monday if I was George McCaskey. I would release mm-hmm. a statement. I would fire them both in a statement. If they want to talk to the press, let them talk to the press. In the statement, I would say, we are now beginning the process of, of finding our next general manager and head coach, and I would not put myself in front of the media at all. You're not expected to. You don't have anything to say. We know who you are. You're a big old goofus. We know you're going to say something terrible if you get out there. Just start the interview process. Not, there's not one fan who will be upset if he fires them both that he doesn't speak to the press. Just start the process and don't do it because you're going to make a mistake. You've been doing it for years. Release a statement on Twitter and go about your business and find the next guy. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing else to say. This is it. You know, just fire them. What what are you going to do? Are you going to talk about how you fired them? Just go out there. (laughs) Everyone knows. Everyone. Well, what happened is is I brought them into the room. They they were pretty happy at first. I offered them them a cup of coffee. Nag, you want a decaf? I didn't have decaf. So I sent the girl out down for decaf. (laughs) Meanwhile, the fucking press is laughing at you. Just just fire them. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. You know, the, the stuff's been going on behind the scenes anyway. And everyone knows that you need to hire a new GM and a new coach. So just dispense with the pleasantries and just crack on with the job. Let's get this in the door as soon as possible and get moving for 2022. That's the most important thing here. Forget press conferences. Well, that's it. We know what's going to come out. It's just going to say, Virginia's pissed. She's so angry at this organization again. We still haven't done it. All right. We're, we're, at, we're, at, hour, we're at hour 45, I'm going to say. I'll say it now. She's not capable of being. Are ninety nine year olds still angry about stuff? You, I, you, you are ninety nine. You shouldn't be angry about shit. You have outlasted almost the entirety of the population. You were born in the old west. 
Like <laughs> you are no longer, you should no longer be capable of getting angry. Oh, the bears aren't winning. You are living, you are in your hundredth year on the earth. Maybe I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, you're just happy to be here. The fact that she can see a football game with her working eyeballs should be more than enough for her to experience gratitude. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Look, Jeff, we've spoken about mainly Jim Harbaugh in terms of the coaching candidates. If not him, what candidates would you like to hear the Bears are planning on interviewing if it wasn't going to be someone like Jim? Uh, I know that they really liked Josh McDaniels when they interviewed him last time around. Uh, yeah. I, I think Josh is a hell of a coach. I question a lot of the personality stuff. But I just watched what he's doing with Mac Jones, and he's he's the assistant coach of the year right now in the NFL. What he's doing with, 100%. with a limited offensive group there, what he's doing is incredible. Uh, I would interview you know some of the guys that, that Noel mentioned are the right guys, and I'd interview Vance Joseph, and I'd interview Raheem Morris, and I'd interview Basaccia right now, who's doing a hell of a job in, yeah. in Vegas. Uh, I don't know how he's winning those games against better teams. That franchise should be in, in shambles right now, and they're not. Um, and they're going to interview the offensive minds, guys like uh, is it McConnell out in the OC right now for Sean McVay? I think his name is I think it's Kevin McConnell. Uh, yeah, oh, it's either O'Connell or McConnell. It's one of your one of your people's names. And, Our people. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> no, no, I think I think I think you're going to find three or four of those guys around the league, and you're going to bring them in. You're going to talk to them, and ultimately. Uh, just get the guy who can lead. Just get the guy. I don't care what his background is. I don't care what side of the ball he's on. Give me a guy who, when he comes in, does what Tomlin did in Pittsburgh, just blows them away. And they say, yeah. this is our head coach. This is the guy we want to, to be the face of the franchise. I'm Listen, if Brian Dable does it, I mean, I've seen Brian Dable. I don't see him blowing anybody away in an interview. I mean. He just I looks like the, the fat Matt Nagy. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> like so, so fat Nagy. So he's already yeah. called Fat Nagy. So we've already yeah. his career is over in Chicago because you've just coined the phrase Fat Nagy. So he has no chance to be good. When, that, when Mark Tresman Mark Tresman when Mark Tresman had his introductory press conference and I saw that hair, I said, "There's no chance." I know it was not. Nah, he's done. I said, "This is not a normal human being would not show his hair. He'd wear a hat. That is not human hair. That is a doll's hair." And I said, if that guy decides that with his hair, how is he going to make the right correct, the right decisions as a football coach? Now that we have Fat Nagy, he has no chance. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, Mark Trapser should have had his old style hat. That, that's the only way that he would have gone through it. The but Irish like, Bears show is sponsored by Old Style. Old style. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that is it. It's, it's one of those, you just want to have someone with confidence. Obviously, you would like to see a guy come in that completely kind of blows you away and, you'd be that can get this fan base a little bit reinvigorated for the team. Cause we saw it a little bit when Justin Fields got drafted, that everybody was together again, season starts and everyone's like, Oh, this is, this sucks again. We we're, we're terrible. All you want to do is have that kind of turn around a little bit. And that's what I think is really important. So it is one of those things. And look, Tony, one of the last kind of questions I'll, I'll ask each one of you, because it this comes is the with seventh the last question. This is I know. the seventh last question so far. The seventh last question. We just like to do one last more question. Thing. Yeah, just <laughs> one more thing. Do you think that this is because everybody talks about this kind of worst the first mentality? I know the Bears will be third, probably second or third in the third in the division. But do you see a possibility for kind of this team as you look at it going into next year? But this is a possibility to where you can actually see genuine improvements. We've already spoken about the schedule, right? So do you think that there is the possibility that you could see the Bears actually being quite competitive this next year? I know a lot of it will depend on Justin Fields, but when we always analyze this when we look at guys that there's a new head coach or there's a new GM or both. So what's your, what's your synopsis of that as you see it going forward? Yeah, you're you're spot on when you say that it that it starts with Justin Fields and it does, you know, because that's going to be the biggest uh, factor on and how quickly this thing progresses. Um, you know, and we were talking off off air before we we started tonight, and we were asking the question like, oh, do you think it would have been, you know, is it is it good that Justin Fields isn't playing uh, against the Vikings at the weekend because he's you know the COVID situation and and all this kind of thing and. But and, and we all agreed that 
you know, regardless of the awful situation and the bad kind of offensive scheme and all this kind of stuff, this season has been invaluable for Fields because he's got that playing time out of the way, um, that that introduction to the NFL that Nagy didn't really want him to have this year because he wanted to play Dalton all year, um, and he wouldn't have had. But the, the 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 breath of fresh air of having Justin Fields in there has been has been great for the organization, and it's been great for Fields because it means next season when we start over with you know a competent head coach in place, um, you know a better offensive scheme, and hopefully some better players around about him. It means that he's he's got that initial oh my god I've just stepped on an NFL field. Um, and I'm panicking about a situation. Um, to you know, I know what I know what to expect now. I've played, you know, whatever how ten games or whatever it is this season. Um, and I, I think that's going to be huge. So his development, you know, he's going to have all the off season. He's going to have the um, training camp. He's going to have preseason. He's going to be the starter this time. He's going to get valuable reps with whichever starting uh, skill players come in around about him, and obviously the offensive line as well, which is going to inevitably be upgraded. Um, so it's going to start and end with him. I think if you look at the situation in terms of, you mentioned that the um, schedule um, is a lot kinder to us than it has been this year, um, combined with the fact that you've got some young guys in there that have got a good a good season behind them, I think, yeah, we can go out there and definitely win, you know, maybe nine or ten games, maybe, maybe more. Um, we should be, Arguably, we should have won nine games this season, you know, so... Um, if you if you've got a, a better situation, a better scheme in place, a guy that's rallying the troops, getting behind them, being a figurehead for the organization, then yeah, you could see 10, 11 win, wins. You know, by the time you get into the playoffs at the end of the year, you've had you know those 17 games to ramp up to it, which is even more experience and more integration. So for me, you know, from, from worst to first, I don't know. Um, I think if you're talking worst to first in terms of the NFC North, that will all depend on whether Aaron Rodgers is still at the Green Bay Packers for me, because if he's if he's still there, then they're still better set up at the moment, um, just because of that experience and and all that kind of stuff that he has versus Fields. I'm not saying Fields could never get to that situation, he could, but you know it's not really an argument there. Um, yeah. So, but if he's gone, if he's gone, then yeah, absolutely. I mean, who else in the NFC North is going to be a real opponent to the Bears, um, you know, you're looking at a, a potential division winner. Um, and then who knows after that, you know, so the arrow's pointing up. The arrow's definitely yeah. pointing up. It's just got to be the right moves that are made. Yeah, let, let's hope that confidence can, we can continue having that as these changes do happen. For anybody listening, make sure that you like the video, make sure that you subscribe as well, because we have a lot of content coming up, especially with all this news that will be kind of coming out over the next week or so we'll be having a bit of a fun show on sunday where we're gonna literally talk shit throughout the entire game and we we're gonna have a kind of a watch along style show where we're gonna be watching the game we're gonna be talking crap we're gonna do some alternative commentary this is gonna be very very funny and then obviously on monday we'll have a show on black monday to kind of recap things as they happen around the league as well because it's always kind of a crazy crazy day Jeff, do you want to let everybody know where they can find a lot of your, your stuff as well from the Bears blog and all your upcoming kind of crazy stories that are going to be coming up over the next couple of days? Yeah, we're relocating all of our content to redtube.com. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, it's all uh, to all da bears blog.com at bears blog. I don't know where that is, Jeff. I've never heard of it. No, no, I noticed the laughter happened pretty fast. So I think we're seeing some familiar colors here. Yeah. Um, no, no, it, it, it's a. Uh, I, I think I I wouldn't be surprised if things happen Sunday night because I think there's some eagerness on the Bears side, um, yeah. and I I think the days of Black Monday are almost sort of over because teams just want to move on. So I I will be very active Sunday night. I'll be drunk, but I'll be active. And then uh, Monday, I'm sure it'll be an all day thing. Hopefully, George doesn't talk, but we're the Bears blog, and we'll be around this pod. This is my favorite thing to do right now in the in the landscape of Bears stuff. So I I love coming on with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Look, we will ha- we would have you on anytime. It's always good fun talking to you, Jeff. It's I'm sure we will be talking over the next few days and weeks as all this sort of stuff ramps up when season ends on Sunday and then all the craziness begins. Tony, no, it's great having you guys on again. I know 
we have a couple of shows lined up over the next week. We have an interesting show next Thursday for you guys as well. Adam Rank from the NFL Network will be joining us as well. We're we'll talking about possible head coaching candidates or if any of those rumors kind of come up, we'll be chatting to him about that next Thursday. So make sure that you do check us out then. We will kind of let you guys know in the exact time that that will be coming out. Like I said, we have a show on Sunday. We'll have one on Monday. So just, again, you can catch this on all your kind of audio streams, YouTube, make sure that you subscribe, make sure you hit the like um, on the video, follow all these guys on all your social media platforms. And all we can say until next time is bear down. Bear down. Bear down.